Mixed light can be a challenging obstacle for any shooter. It can occur anywhere, from inside to studio to out on location. While photographers and videographers have tools that allow them to control and manipulate mixed light to their advantage, sometimes you have to think outside the box to work with mixed lights and mixed lighting conditions. Hang on till the end of this video, because I'm going to share with you my 10 best tips to shoot in mixed lighting conditions. Hi. I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. I want to get going on the topic quickly, but do stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you about some freebies and training courses that I offer to improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work and help grow your business through something known as earned media exposure, which is basically through free advertising. If you like what you see, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video each and every Wednesday. Remember, I welcome your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. With that, let's get started discussing what mixed light is. Mixed light occurs when you have two or more sources of light interfering with the image or film you're trying to shoot. Color temperature is what mixed light really affects. All light has a color that can vary between warm and cool tones and temperatures. An example is a sunset, which will have a really warm color temperature. Compare this to an artificial light source, such as a light box, which will have a relatively cool color temperature. Color temperature is measured on a scale in degrees Kelvin. This allows you to assign a number to the color of the light source. A sunset may be around 3500 to 4500 Kelvin, as it's quite warm on the scale, whereas midday daylight will be closer to 6000 K. An in-studio light can get higher than 10,000 K or more. So when these light sources are in one single image or scene, it can really be hard to set up your shot without blowing out the light or compensating for one light source over the other, which throws off the color temperature. A common example of a mixed light situation could be inside the interior of a restaurant, for example where you have open windows letting in natural light and harsh interior lights coming from the ceiling. Here are my best tips that can help you to shoot effectively if you have a mixed lighting situation. Number one, scope the location out before you shoot if you can. This is an important tip for all photographers and videographers. Scouting ahead of time, or at least before you begin setting up your shoot, will allow shooters to better understand the environment before the shoot begins. Determine how many light sources are in a location and where they're located. Each type of light has different color temperatures, so look for windows and overhead light and make a note of what will work best for the type of shoot that you're working on. If there's a light source that dominates the rest, consider using that color temperature as a starting point unless there's an ability to remove it by blocking it out of your shots or covering it with lighting gels or something else. Take sample shots to really understand what a camera does to manipulate the light at the location and make notes for additional light sources that may need to be brought to the location by you. Number two, if shooting photos, shoot in RAW. If shooting video, shoot at a lower ISO and a higher bitrate. By shooting raw footage versus JPEG, you give yourself more opportunities to manipulate the light source in post-production. Raw images don't embed color temperature correction information into the images, allowing you to completely manipulate and adjust the image in post-production. This gives photographers a lot more wiggle room to work with. For video shooters, it's a good idea to try to avoid overwhelming amount of mixed video lighting from various sources. This would yield competing color temperatures in your shot. So if you have a lamp producing a warm tungsten light while also receiving cooler light from a window, you're going to get an odd light combination from the lights that you have available. 
The mixed lighting can be rough on your camera sensor also if you're shooting in auto white balance as it's trying to auto white balance with the contrasting lighting so it's changing back and forth all the time. Depending on how the sensor white balances, you can end up with very warm and yellow shots or very pale and blue shots and my guess is you don't want either of those. If your camera is struggling with the different color temperatures, turn off the lamp and stick with natural lighting coming through a window. Set your camera to manual and adjust your color temperature to the strongest light source. Expect to have to do some color correction in post-production, but if you shoot at a higher bit rate, you'll get better color to begin with, so it'll be easier for you to do later. Number three, as mentioned above, simply manually set your color temperature instead of selecting an automatic color temperature on your camera settings. Consider learning how to manually set your color temperature to match the lighting on set. A gray card can help you analyze the lighting conditions in your shoot location, assisting you in avoiding mixed lighting mistakes. Remember to change your settings as your shot changes because the lighting will be different by an open window than it would be in some back stock room, for example, or in the kitchen or wherever else you're shooting. Number four, block the light source that you don't want in the scene. Try to block whatever light source you don't want in your shots. If you're shooting in a house interior, consider turning off the indoor lights and instead manipulate the light coming through the windows by using lighting gels or even closing the blinds. You may have to compensate other camera settings to adjust, but you'll minimize the conflicting light source. Alternatively, you can shut the curtains and focus on manipulating the interior light sources. The idea is to focus on maximizing one major light source as best as you can to minimize or eliminate the mixed lighting situation. Number five, I've said it a few times already, but it bears repeating, use filters to compensate. If you're using flash in the studio, for example, you may need to add additional light and color to the situation. Use filters or gels to correct the studio light and match whatever ambient light is already present. This works for video also. Consider using neutral density filters to cut down the light streaming in from an open window or use filters on existing lighting to change their color temperature. Using lighting gels is an important topic and I've done a few videos on using them in your shooting. I'll link to those videos in the description below so you can watch them after watching this video and you can learn even more. Number six, this one seems kind of obvious, but avoid shooting with both natural and artificial light sources. If shooting using a window, avoid other mixed light sources such as overhead lights. Try to keep light sources separate if you can, particularly if choosing to shoot using natural light coming through a window, let's say. Harsh midday daylight and ambient light from artificial sources create different color temperatures, as I mentioned. When they're mixed, it can create a photograph or footage that isn't the most flattering for whatever you're trying to shoot. Always isolate a light source as much as you can whether you're choosing to shoot natural or artificial light. Number seven, position your subject at the right spot for the light that you're using. Once lighting is set up, position your subject in a spot where they are highlighted by the light correctly. A key tip to keep in mind here is to have the subject illuminated by only one light source. And if it is, and it looks good, then you're probably okay. If there are harsh overhead lights, but a large window in a shoot location, consider moving your subject towards the window because the downlights would cast odd shadows on your subject's face. Moving your subject near a window, for example, may assist by allowing natural light to come in and minimize background artificial lighting. Alternatively, if you're shooting using artificial light, consider moving the subject as far away from the window as possible. This will help to avoid mixed lighting concerns. Number eight, diffuse natural light sources. Diffusing window light is a great way to create soft, flattering images of a subject or product. Golden hour in the early morning or late evening is a great place to start. This is also a great tip for a cloudy day where you'll get softer light coming in through a window with no direct sun rays to create harsh shadows. Using diffusion gels, 
are one of the topics I addressed in the lighting gel video that I mentioned earlier. So if you want, take a look at that video and you'll learn something new. Number nine, fill unwanted shadows with more light. Shooting in midday can result in harsh shadows. You can use a fill source, such as a reflector, to soften or eliminate shadows so you can create a more flattering photograph or scene. If you have a professional reflector and an assistant to help or a C-stand, great. If not, something as simple as a white piece of paper can help you or even a white countertop which can reflect light back up to your subject. You want something that will make the shadows brighter and less stark against the highlighted portion from the light source. Number 10. Finally, if all else fails, correct your lighting in post-production. If you follow my first tip and shot photos in RAW, this is where it comes in handy. Photographers can color correct issues in post-production using a variety of correction techniques. Using the gray card mentioned earlier, you can use Photoshop or Lightroom to edit your white balance. Consider using the brush or graduated tools to adjust the color temperature as you might have many within one image. For video, this is where you'll open your color correction tools in your editing program and make adjustments as needed. Mixed lighting is a huge issue for shooters. However, mastering mixed lighting will not only make beautiful photographs and scenes, but will also impress your clients as well. There's nothing more impressive in a shooter than being in control of the lighting and the camera elements that create a great photograph or footage. This is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, have you ever shot under difficult lighting conditions? If you have, leave a comment below and let us know how it went. If you found the information in this video useful, I'd like to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films. If you think what you saw was great, please do like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,500 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this long. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training course for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up in editing video in under two hours and includes over 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors that gets you started in the program and makes your workflow go much faster. Now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully, so I know from firsthand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program, and it will help you to take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility to become the go-to brand everyone talks about and wants to do business with without spending a fortune on advertising because the program is geared to get you free advertising. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you, as well as links to get more information. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses, requesting my free downloads, or by hiring me to shoot and edit for you. Remember, I've also done other videos on filmmaking and video production, and I'll link 
to those in the description below. I've also done videos on many of the topics that I covered in this video, such as lighting, using a grave card, and more. So you can learn lots more by looking through the videos and the tutorials that I've done. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers, just like you on Facebook, where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experiences. The group is private and only for people in the filmmaking, video production, and photography industries that I personally work in myself. It's not a public group like my Facebook page that I talked about earlier. That's a public group and anyone can see that because I want them to find my business to hire me. You'll find a link to that group in the description below as well. So feel free to join it where you can learn even more.